I've made two applications to Oxford and in the first one, scored really low on the admissions test and I was rejected. The second time round, however, looking at the feedback I got from my first application, I realised just how important the admissions test was, revised much harder, and I got in. So in this video, I want to talk about exactly why I think the admissions test is so important, some proof or some stats online that will hopefully back that up, and then finally, with that being the case, how exactly to best prepare for the admissions test. So let's start off by looking at what Oxford say online about these admissions tests, and of course it'll be really similar for Cambridge. It can be difficult for us to choose between so many well-qualified candidates. Tests give us an extra piece of information for every student who has applied to the course. And this completely echoes what I was told in my feedback for my rejected application. Basically what they said to me was, you perform on an interview, but the admissions test is the objective thing where we can really compare everyone. On top of that, as well as it's just being objective, people tend to score higher in interviews full stop. So we take scoring higher in the admissions test really, really valuably. Using the freedom of information requests which have been released, we can see that this is true. I'm looking at the BMAT scores now for medicine, which is one of the most popular tests and courses, and we can see that the percentage of A stars at GCSE is basically exponential. The higher the percentage of A stars at GCSE, the more people that actually apply with that. And so we can see that it can often obviously be very hard for the university to get much from this because the better the applicant basically, the more that there are people applying with that. However, if we look at the BMAT scores, we can see that we now have a nice bell curve where actually it's no longer the case that basically the better your score is, the more people there are. So you really can differentiate yourself more and the higher up you come, the fewer people there are. So now that I've hopefully persuaded you of the importance of the admissions test, let's talk about exactly how to prepare with this in mind. What should you do in the long term? I think all of the following things, I would say maybe do 10 weeks before the exam. So maybe the end of the summer holidays is about the right time. Maybe that's what sort of August point, start of September. About the same time you might be starting thinking about your personal statement, you should be thinking about these following things with the admissions test then. No later, because at that point you want to be already starting your prep. The first thing you need to do is get familiar with exactly what paper you're going to do. The admissions test you take will depend on your course, but also if you're doing different course options, for example, Classics 1B versus Classics 1C, you might be doing slightly different parts of the admissions test, different sections that you won't have to do another section of, for example. Also at this point, you should know exactly what your paper is. So for example, for Classic, it's basically just a translation, or if you're doing something like the TSA, the Thinking Skills Assessment, then actually that's kind of not really related to the subject that you will be studying at university or any of the subjects you already do at A-level. It's basically kind of verbal reasoning, non-verbal reasoning. And so that's something you will obviously have to basically look at from scratch. You can't take things out of your A-levels and apply them to your course necessarily or the course admissions test. At this point, obviously, you'll also be able to tell what your strengths and weaknesses are. If you do some past papers or at least look at the questions, if you're on the BMAT and you do chemistry and biology A level and you don't do physics, it's likely that the physics questions will be your weakest and you might want to spend more time on them. And therefore it's good to know early that this is the case and you can start prepping, maybe spotting patterns in the questions that come up. In the TSA, there's basically two types of questions, critical thinking and problem solving. But even within these two bands, there are subsets of questions. So for example, you might find the spatial reasoning questions really hard. And once you recognize that, the earlier the better, of course, you can start prepping. Also, you should know what a good score is. For example, on the TSA, you might be looking at a rule mark of roughly 30, 32, 35. And that is marked slightly differently because they kind of moderate the papers. But you should know if you're getting 28 when you're starting, if you're getting 25, or if you're getting 36 when you're starting, just to kind of know roughly where you are, how much you need to work on it, and how much you need to improve. Okay, so now let's talk about things slightly more medium term. Now you know exactly what paper you're doing, what sections, what's in those sections, the timing of it, what you find easy and hard. Obviously now you need to try and improve your scores and improve your marks. I would say this is within that sort of last two months, maybe one month before the paper. The papers are normally in October, so maybe as you're starting school, you're starting to do this practice for your admissions test. Just because the tests might not be subject knowledge, for example the TSA, doesn't mean you can't improve your scores at all. And of course many of the admissions tests are actually related to your subjects as well. For example, my cat was just a translation, so you absolutely can improve your scores. If you look on the website for your course and there'll be a section about your admissions test, you might be able to find some past papers. 
Alternatively, depending on the test, you might be able to find answer schemes as well, if it's one of the multiple choice ones like the TSA, and you might even be able to find work out answers where they go through exactly why the answer there was E as opposed to B, and you can see all of these things. These are obviously a great place to start, but just like revising for A-levels or any other exam, you don't want to go through the past papers too quickly. Because if you do them all within the first two weeks and you've still got four or six weeks left you want to be revising, that's kind of pointless because you want to be using your uh, practice papers in the right way. You don't want to use them too early before you've kind of learned the course and can use them as best possible. One option of that is buying books or online finding these books of past paper kind of mock questions that aren't necessarily by uh, one of the other previous years so you can save these actual official mock papers or, or old papers for later and of course the benefit of some of this is in the TSA for example it can sometimes split it into different sections so within your critical thinking section you can have all the different types of questions so if you find one hard you can just go through those few pages of that practice paper book blitzing through all those questions trying to improve that specific part of it as opposed to of course the past papers which will just have them in all kind of muddle which is of course less useful for actually learning. Similarly for the cat which is a translation the one I did you tend to get words that come up again and again and so that's really useful to know in advance and kind of prep these words for example in the John Taylor Greek to GCSE which is I think a common uh, book textbook that people use for A-level, there's a section of 300 verse words. In the cat, you have a translation of some prose, basically a bit of a story, and then some verse, which is basically a poem. And these poems you often don't do until year 13. And because you're taking that admissions test at the start of year 13, basically based off year 12 work, you might want to learn those 300 words early. And that's something I did, which vastly improved my scores, or at least when I was looking at them, I knew way more vocab uh, that second time round because I kind of thought, that's actually something I'm going to do first before I attempt the past papers. So just stuff like that uh, might really help before you kind of waste the past papers too early maybe. Know exactly kind of what you want to do and prep first so you can use them to the best of your ability. And finally speak to your teachers, see if they can help out. Some of them, like I say, are of course more tied to the subject. So I was really lucky I felt with classics that I could go to my teacher or my teachers and they could obviously help me quite closely and when I had done those papers, I could just do some other A-level kind of translations and they were quite similar. Of course, the admissions test is slightly different, but compared that to the TSA, where it might be kind of weird for your history teacher or your politics teacher to be helping you uh, in the sense that they might not be able to help as much because it's not so related. But if your subject is related, if you're doing the maths admissions test, the physics admissions test, definitely speak to your teachers. And otherwise, uh, if it, you're doing something like the TSA, it's still worth as well maybe they can go through some stuff with you. Uh, if there are a few of you, maybe you can have a bit of a lunchtime club where the teacher goes through these things with you. Let's quickly talk about what to do in the short term, that night before or the day of the admissions test you'll do. Obviously, much easier said than done, but really don't panic when you go into it. The majority of people say that the hardest test they do of the past papers they've done, the mock papers and the one that they actually do is their real one. Basically because of the pressure, you know, that's the one, you're in a hall with loads of people, you can't do it from the comfort of your house. And don't stress if when you go into the exam you think, oh, I've really been preparing for things that were a bit easier than that. Everyone in the room is thinking that. So that's the first piece of advice I would give. Secondly, just treat this as every other exam, just because it might be a thinking skills assessment where you're not really regurgitating knowledge or anything like that. It doesn't really feel like an A-level exam. Treat it the same, do whichever routine work for you at GCSE and if you did any exams at the end of year 12, uh, maybe take a few days off before uh, the actual day or from past papers. So if you have a bad one the night before, you don't stress and then think, oh, actually I've taken some bad momentum into the paper which is the next morning. And of course, watch your timing. These tests often have the hardest bit being the timing, whether that be finishing it and of course as people say, if you had the whole day you could probably do really well, but you don't. So make sure you keep your timing in check. That's of course one of the things you can do when you practice, knowing how much time to spend on each section, uh, but don't uh, get that wrong in the exam. So there we go, that's it for this video. Hopefully that was useful and I wish you the absolute best of luck in your admissions test when you take it. But apart from that, have a good one and I'll see you in the next one.